Well, he's played a lot of a lot of games last season specifically. Uh, he's his skating, uh, his competitiveness. So, um, and he had a good camp. So it's a good opportunity for him to jump in and uh, look forward to seeing him. As far as the forward rotation goes, what, you're yeah. dominating the conference room here. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as the forward rotation goes, the guys seem to understand it, but. In that moment when you tell them they're I mean, sitting out, I'm sure there's disappointment. How, how have they handled it as a group, I guess? They've handled it uh, about as well as you can handle it. it. It it sucks to have to sit a guy healthy when you know they're competing and playing hard. It's it's not a good feeling. Um, and uh, But, you know, as I've said, when you have, you know, we're really healthy up front. We, we wish we were that healthy on the back end. Um, but when you, when you have that, you have – Guys, 23-man roster, and if everybody's healthy, only 20 play. So, you know, they anybody can understand that. And, uh, you know, where we're at, um, you know, give or take, th th those guys are competing, and then they all deserve to play. You just can't play them all. Don, what's the, I guess what's the key to creating more opportunities from the slot in this one area that you guys probably haven't had to manage your life? Progression. I think it'll be a progression. Um, I think we'll get. I know we'll get better at. It. I shouldn't say I think we will. Um, there's so many different things you're putting together. You know, f six, seven games into the year, it does take uh, 20 games at least to get to get everything into place. Guys aren't feeling. Um, you know, they're not in midseason form, and I think that is one area that is an indicator that they're not in midseason form. Um, you know, you have to use the perimeter in the offensive zone because teams are so good tightening things up. But then you also have to know when to get off the perimeter uh, to get into the slot or, or shooting areas. And uh, again, that's a that's a process at the start of any season for all teams. I'm watching it. You know, really around the league, lots of goals scored on breakdowns. There won't be breakdowns like that. You know, 20 games in, you'll have to manufacture it. And I think what you're mentioning is more of a scenario where you need to man how to manufacture offense, how to get from the perimeter inside at the right time. Jacob's had a very widely had a strong start. He's playing with Rasmus tonight. What's going into his start this season? Uh, Bryson? Yes. Yeah, he, he just, you know, the way he works, he just keeps getting better. So, um, you know, he... And I say works on in the game, but he, he watches the film after him and, and, and Marty Wilford, Danny Girardi will sit down after every game and go through, you know, his his scenarios as they do with each D and he, he internalizes that well. He tries to uh, you know, he's intuitive enough to figure out, okay, what what can I do better? What can I take advantage of with my skill set, which being quickness and assertiveness and you know, he continues to add to his game and uh, that is because of his competitiveness and his you know, he's a pretty talent. He's a very talented kid, so that adds to it as well. Coach, when you integrate a new defenseman into the lineup, you have Craig. When Craig's in goal, does he kind of help with that process? Because he's, we know he's been around so much, and just kind of help get that guy where he needs to be and what you guys are trying to do. He he does. I think he does his share. Absolutely. He he's. Um, I don't think he's. You know, has a checklist of what to go over with his defenseman, but he he's very good at read and react. Um, and helping the guys just if it's net front positioning on shots or you know as, so as scenarios play out within uh, within the context of the game Craig knows our system very well uh, and he can help us send any message needed to you know to acclimate a guy to how we want to play or how we play situations and he does it. Is Tage feeling some pressure? Uh, I think Tage always puts pressure on himself and I think he always complicates things because he puts pressure on himself. He just wants it. He wants it now. He wants it bad. Uh, I had another conversation with him this morning just to, to, to give him a few th thoughts, uh, observations of my own. Um, but I do, I do see this as just part of a natural process, knowing his personality. Um, you know, he's, again, another guy that just wants it so bad, wants it now, and he, he's not in midseason form yet. It's just not. He hasn't had enough touches, and... Um, enough time and you know you want to hurry to that point you want to hurry to mid-season form and you, you try to make everything perfect along the way and it's not very conducive to, to getting in the flow and it's what we've seen I think on him but uh, I'm confident that'll resolve itself. What is the Gergensen's line done well that's led to some of those long close-up shifts they've had the last 
I think uh, both Zemgis and Ocposo have looked better each game. Um, and to the point where last game was far and away their best from an energy standpoint. Uh, they had better jump, and I think that's just, just what we're seeing there with them. They know they have a great sense of objective as veteran NHL players. They know how to keep the game simple and direct, and uh, they're, they've gone through a process of doing that harder based on you know getting back into midseason form. And uh, again, the other night was far and away their best uh, game from as far as you know their energy level and their ability to skate and sustain for three periods, um, and I hope that it continues to you know improve tonight in that in that regard. Good.